Oh, you, oh, I'm, okay. So um, we're going to step away from uh, First Samuel a little bit today because um, that's Pastor Phil's, uh, uh, what he's t teaching. And um, so I was praying last night about it and uh, seeing what the Lord wanted and what direction he wanted us to go in. And I uh, felt that the Lord uh, was leading me to Matthew 5, um, 13, 16, which is salt and light. It's one of those scriptures where, you know, we probably read it a lot of times. I know I have. But, um, and you go, wow, that's a cool scripture, you know, or salt, or lie. Um, but then when you really break it down, uh, it's pretty powerful uh, as far as what, what Jesus is telling his disciples there. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll open up in prayer and uh, we'll jump right into this. Oh, Lord. Father God, your word is, um, is amazing, Lord. And Father, we're just so grateful that uh, you speak to our hearts, Lord. Father, we're grateful that you are, um, you're the light that shines to us, Lord, and, and Father God, we're grateful for your word. Lord, I pray, I pray that, you, that you, go, uh, you go before us tonight, before the study, that anything that is said here tonight comes directly from you and not from me, Lord. And Father, that you prepare each and every one of our hearts in here, Lord, uh, to receive, and Lord, to not only just hear what you have to say tonight, Lord, but to be doers. Father God, it is uh, so important for us to live by your word. And not just say that we live by it. And Father, I just pray for your hand to be upon us today. We invite you, Lord, into this uh, into this meeting tonight. Because without you, there would be no meeting, Lord. And we pray for your Holy Spirit to be poured upon each and every one of us in here, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, we're going to start off just reading uh, verse 13 of uh, Matthew uh, 5. And uh, what it says, uh, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing, but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. And uh, I was reading that and I was thinking, wow, that's, uh, that's pretty amazing that the Lord Jesus is telling us we are the salt. I mean, that, that's, that's, a, uh, that's incredible that, that God is, is going to tell his disciples, Christians, born again, born again Christians that have given our lives to him, saying, you know what, you guys are the salt. You guys are going to be the ones that are going to be spreading this gospel. And it kind of blows you away when you think about it that way. And then I was thinking, okay, in the, he's talking about salt. Why, why are these salt? We can go back and, and think it's an analogy or something like that from Jesus, but it's not. If, we, if you guys want to turn to Leviticus uh, 2.13, it talks about it early in the game here. Leviticus 2.13, it says, um, And every offering of your grain offering you shall season with salt. You shall not allow the salt of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your grain offering. With all your offerings, you shall offer salt. I was like, wow. So it wasn't just an analogy. It wasn't just the Lord trying to give a... a a cool analogy about salt and how we're going to go out there like a salt shaker like out of this church and we're going to go out and we're going to be um, ministry to people. It's it's a covenant that the Lord has with his people. And um, we see here that, uh, you know, it's a big responsibility for us. Um, yes, it's uh, it, it's an amazing privilege, but when we accept the uh, uh, Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, um, we, expect the, we accept the responsibility that comes with it. And um, it's, it's a message that we're carrying from the Lord. So you ask, you know, I ask myself, what does that mean to me uh, that the Lord's saying, you know, to his disciples then and relaying it uh, us today in his word um, that I'm the salt of the earth or that we're the salt of the earth. And uh, salt is used for a lot of stuff. It's used for, for everything from, uh, from soothing and healing to um, seasoning it's a, a preserver, so it's used for a lot of things, and, and uh, we're going to get into some of those things today. One of the things that it's, that, uh, that it's used for is probably the one that we think of first, or maybe second, uh, is seasoning. And um, when we want to draw flavor out of our food, uh, like if you go look for recipes for brownies or cookies, stuff like that, like I have like a sweet tooth. Um, there's always a little bit of salt in there. And the reason the salt's in there is to bring the flavor out of that, um, 
of those pastries that you're that you're making. Without the salt, they get they're bland. They don't have. Uh, they might be too sweet, but um, it doesn't it doesn't draw out the flavor. Um, one example that I use all the time because I, I like it is I, I drink uh, I drink hot chocolate, and with my hot chocolate I put sugar and I put like a little pinch of salt, and it makes a big difference on. On the way that, but you know what? You don't even feel it. You don't taste the salt. You don't see it. And that's how we should be. We should be like that, like that seasoning, like that little bit of salt amongst those people that are around us that we're ministering to. And it doesn't. And a lot of times they don't even know you're ministering to them, but you're you're speaking to their heart. Um, if we go to uh, Colossians four six, uh, Paul Paul tells us. He says, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. So there you go. We, throughout our days, throughout our work, if we're going to school, in our families, when we, when we have family gatherings, um, everything that we talk about, everything that we, that our conversations should be, should be seasoned, they should be seasoned with the gospel. Um, and a lot of times when we're in a conversation with people, we're not listening as much as we're thinking about what we're going to tell them when they're done talking. And that's, uh, that doesn't work when you want to season a conversation with the gospel. We need to really listen to what the conversation is about and listen to the heart of that person talking. And um, that way we can respond graciously and we can respond with with a, a biblical response and not with something that um that we just had like we, we got to get this out i want to tell them this and and then i'll let him talk and then i'll tell them else what i want to tell them so uh, when, when they leave when that conversation is over and they leave the conversation whether it's a person whether it's at work and you're on break or the family you want you want that person to have a desire to to remember what you had talked about to say, wow, you know, what he, what he told me about God or the way that he related that issue I was having was, was pretty, you want them to remember that conversation and the way you, they'll remember it is if we are gracious and is if we use, you know, biblical, biblical, biblical terms and what the Lord wants because everything as Christians, that's our job. Our, our job is to draw others to the Lord and to, and to bring out the gospel. You know, now, during a conversation, we... Uh, sometimes when we do that, we get attacked a little bit, or we feel like we get attacked because somebody doesn't want to hear about Jesus, right? So instead of uh, peppering or seasoning it with a little bit of gospel, we kind of take the lid off and we smack them in the head with the Bible and tell them, uh, you know, you're wrong and that's it. I'm not. Uh, we're, we're done here. And that's not the way it should be. Of course, they're gonna they're gonna disagree with what we have to say because they don't know. They're like we were before we knew the Lord. Of course, they're gonna they're gonna. Even be angry a little bit. Hey, salt uh, irritates a little bit. Even even when it's just a little bit, it irritates. Even if you're just agreeing with somebody, but in a, in a in, in a in a Christ-like way, and they realize that, uh, it can irritate them. And then they're going to come back in a way where uh, we might take offense to it, but we can't. Our conversation should always always be uh, in love. And without condemnation, we're not there to condemn anybody. We're there to share Christ's love and to uh, and maybe a little bit of conviction there. That's not bad. I, I want conviction throughout my day, you know. And um, and that goes with any that goes throughout our daily life. And sometimes uh, speaking about myself, I forget about that uh, when I'm at work. I meet different people all day long, and sometimes I'll you know I'll get into this cool conversation and uh, talk about the Lord, and sometimes I don't even think about it. And uh, They'll say something, and then I feel like hesitant to tell them. Well, you know what? That's that's you're wrong, and that's that's not really a, the, the right path to take. And, and tell them enough. I just I'll ignore it. And we're not supposed to. We should we should in the, in, a, in the most loving way possible, like Jesus was with the woman at the well. She uh, she was sitting there, and uh, he came over, and he was so loving to her. There was no condemnation there, and uh, he knew he knew that she was living with somebody. He knew, he knew all of her, all of her stuff, and um, he loved her so much. It was, it was amazing, and that's how we need to be when we, uh, when we talk to others. And that's that one of those parts of where my wife uh, told me when I was telling her to bring this uh, 
if I if I like read what I wrote and said, yeah, I did. So so yeah, we sometimes we, we can't just hear what we're saying and we can't just write down. We actually have to be doers of our word and, and of the word that the Lord's given us. So so along these same lines, it, it's it's a seasoning and it draws. We want to we want to have the interest of those that we're talking to and want them to come back. Uh, and, and we want them to, to be uh, curious and come back and talk more about, about the Lord or about that conversation that we had. So along that, we have salt creates thirst. And uh, as Christians, we should be making people thirsty for what we have. They might not even know what it is that we have. We might just be at Costco or Home Depot, and you're walking, you're walking along and, and uh, you're talking to somebody, and for some reason they're thinking, wow, you know, I, I want to know what the, why this guy is so joyful. You know, I want to know what this guy has, what, what he has that uh, that just attracted me to him. And that's what we should be. We should be creating that thirst. It's like uh, one of the examples I used was uh, for breakfast. You have a nice big piece of ham. So then you like love that ham. You had your ham and you put the salt over your eggs. And then till about one o'clock, you can't get rid of the thirst. You're like just drinking the water. It's like undoubtedly you're, you're and and you you don't regret having the ham. Because the ham is great, but you really welcome those part, those times when you're drinking that, that glass of water because it's it's quenching that thirst that you had, and um, that's what we should be. It should be something we should be creating a thirst that's appealing, that uh, that lead, like that, that ham. You know, when we talk to somebody at work or at home or that, like again with our family gatherings, people that don't know the Lord, um, we need to give them that. Leave them, leave them. Uh, if, if if the conversation can't go to the point of complete gospel, leave him with the wanting and wanting to know, and I want to know what he's talking about. I want to know uh, why why he spoke to me that way, and and um, and that's that's that thirst, and, and we need to cause a thirst for Jesus Christ. You know, we're talking about food and stuff because of the salt, and that's the analogy that was used. But it, we need to uh, cause a, a thirst for Jesus, and. Um, And what they're desiring is, uh, and they may not even know it, but we can, sometimes we can work, work that into our conversation, is they're desiring to have living water. It's not just that water. It's the same water as that woman in the well. It's a water that you'll never thirst again. And that's what we're headed for, towards. And, um, but one of the things that, we, uh, that I wrote down, because uh, this is what the Lord put on my heart, was um, if we don't have that same thirst, in our lives, but yet we're here, we're coming to church, and we're um, coming to studies, but we don't have that thirst for the Lord, for that living water, how can we expect to have that thirst, to, to create that thirst in others that we come across? So the only way to have that thirst is what we're doing today, you know, is to fellowship, to be in the Word, and to truly seek God, asking Him to, uh, to, keep, us, to keep us thirsty, to keep us hungry for His Word. You know, in uh, Psalm uh, 42, uh, 1 and 2, you guys want to turn there? Um, Psalm 42, 1 and 2. Sorry about that. Make that out of my Bible, I think. Psalm 42, 1 and 2 it says, As a deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before and appear before God? And that's what we need to be. That's how we need to be. And if we if we don't have that thirst, if we don't have, if we don't have that in us. People can see that because the the light you know the, the light of the Lord isn't shining through us like we're going to read later. So we need to have that that thirst in us. We need to have that desire. We need to have that wanting to know what the Lord has for us next every second of the day, every minute of the day. In His Word, in the morning, in His Word, in the evening, and throughout our day, um, seeking Him, and that keeps us from trouble too. It keeps us from uh, the billboards. It keeps us from wandering through. Um, through computer stuff, because you know what? It's hard to wander through that stuff when you're reading the gospel, when you're reading the word of God. When you're through the Psalms, you don't want to be doing any of that stuff. So, 
it's we need to have that thirst. If I, I can't, I can't uh, emphasize that enough. So another thing that that salt is used for is uh, it's used to soothe and to heal. And I, I looked this up because uh, I was looking up what salt's good for. So, and uh, one of them is you know it's good of course for sore throats when we're when we're kids and uh, when we have a sore throat or we have a toothache. Our moms tell us to get warm water and gargle with salt, and it does. It helps, and it, and it starts to kill the, uh, the bacteria that's in there. It's good for bee stings. You make a little paste out of it. You put on the bee sting. So now we're getting like a whole like home remedies thing. Real quick. <laughs> so it's good for bug bites. You can do that. Also, if uh, if you get uh, poison ivy or poison oak, you can uh, get in a tub with salt water, and it also helps soothe the uh, poison ivy and poison oak, and helps the uh, Start healing that. So there you go. That's that's just extra. We won't charge for that. So, <laughs> so as the salt of the earth, we have the gospel. That's what we're that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to share the gospel with those that are hurting. Um, and like like salt helps helps to heal and to soothe the sores, the physical sores on the body. The word of God uh, brings healing to those who will listen to us. And um, we can't make anybody listen. Uh, and that's for sure. Because we, if we think back to when we didn't know the Lord, they, they couldn't make us listen. They, it, it, the Lord had to draw, draw us to him, and then we, uh, we listened. Um, but there's, uh, there's always a time, especially at work or at home or family members, that, um, that know we know the Lord. And they're the ones that usually kind of stay away from us or... Or they don't want to get into too deep of a conversation because it might be a little convicting or it might be a little sore for them. But those are the ones that when they're really hurting, they want to hear some solid and comforting words. And uh, that's how, that's how uh, the gospel, that's how we use the gospel, to, to soothe them. And um, we tell them about the love of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross and the promise of eternal life. And usually when people come that are hurting, they're not physically hurting. They don't have a, a pain in their arm or their leg. They're hurting because of a loss of someone. They're hurting because of an illness that now they have that, that they're afraid and they don't know who to talk to because they're going to get uh, – the, the advice they're going to get from somebody else, they know it's just going to be uh, superficial. But when they come to one of us, we have the gospel. We're the salt. We're the ones that are going to give them the truth. And we're the ones that are going to give them that comfort through um, – through the word of God. And um, I just encourage you guys to, to remember that. And uh, I know that, that this, this study for me spoke to me a lot, and especially when my wife helped me, uh, told me the parts that I need to work on. So, uh, and, uh, and another thing that salt is good for uh, is to preserve. Um, before, before refrigerators, before ice and all that stuff, they, you know, they killed animals and they had to preserve the meat to pro, you know, so that they, they, they wouldn't have to eat it that day. So they would pack it, right? They'd pack it in salt. They would uh, sprinkle salt on it, uh, pack it, and that would keep the, the, the meat from rotting. So um, we call ourselves Christian men. We come here on Thursday nights. We're we should be preserving. That's, what we're, that's another thing we're called to do as, as the salt of the earth. We're, we're preserving the word of God, and the way we're preserving it is in our own homes. It's got to start there. It's got to start with our wives and our children. If we at home aren't reading the word, if we at home aren't seeking the Lord and praying with our families, with our wives, with our kids, they're not going to take uh, our walk seriously. They're not going to trust when we tell them that we're praying for something for our household that we're really praying because they don't see it. Actions uh, mean a lot in our home. So we have to make it a point to be that preservative of the word of God in our home. And from there it'll spread because our kids and our wives will, be, will do the same outside of the home. But we need to be that example. We are the pastors of our home. We are the ministers in our, uh, in our house to our children. And sure, our kids are young and they'll, uh, sometimes they go south on us for a little bit, but that doesn't excuse us not teaching them the word and doesn't excuse us not praying with them and, um, and, and uh, teaching them what, what the gospel has to say about their actions and what the word of God has to say about, about what they're doing. So when they do stray, they will be back, like the word says. They'll come back. It may be a while, but they'll come back. And, uh, you know, that has to extend, that, that preservative of the word has to extend outside of our homes too. 
We preserve the word of God in our, uh, in our jobs, in our schools, wherever we're with people. We preserve it in family gatherings. Again, when we're around people, because we're the ones that, we're, we may be that only Bible that uh, these people hear. We might be the only Bible that they, that they know. They might know uh, stuff that they heard, and they'll misquote scripture big time, and you'll be going, wow, that, that doesn't mean that. But you would never know it if you weren't in the Word, right? If we weren't to Saul, we'd never know if somebody was mis, uh, misrepresenting the scriptures or not saying the verses properly. So that's, that's where we preserve the Word. When you're at work and somebody says, oh, you know, money's the root of all evil, you say, no, that's not what the scripture says. The scripture doesn't say that, and you, you can give it to them. You can give them the right, the right scripture and tell them this is what it says. It says this because, because it's, money isn't. We are. It's the way we handle it. That's, what, that's, what, uh, that's where the evil comes from. Um, money can be used for good. It can be used to help people. So the only way we can preserve the word is if we know the word. So as, as salt that we, are, that, we told that, we're, that we are told that we are by Jesus, um, we need to be preservers of his word. And uh, and uh, that's pretty much all we have for salt, I think. Are you thirsty, Ellie? I'm getting thirsty. Trust me. So, well, the sec- we're still in the salt a little bit. So the second part of this ver- the second part of this verse this is, a, this is a long verse. Second part of the verse. Um, the second part of the verse uh, says, "But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall?" How shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Second part of the verse is about losing its flavor. It's talking about Christians who get away from seeking the Lord. Uh, it's, it's talking about people, it could be any of us in here, it could be me next week, uh, coming to church, but I just lost my desire for the Lord, lost my desire to read, lost my desire to follow what what uh, what God's uh, will is in my life, not praying with my family anymore, not uh, giving my my wife or my daughter biblical uh, counseling. It's um. It's that's what he's that's what that's what Jesus is talking about here. Um, it's losing its flavor. We we can't we can't do that. Uh, we the way that that happens is when we start getting numb and we stop uh, reading because we got too busy in the morning or. Or because, uh, oh, you know, I'm tired tonight. I'm going to watch a little bit of baseball or a little bit of, you know, TV or whatever. And we stray from the Word of God to what the world has. And it's a, and that's why it's called a backslide. It's a slow uh, regression. It's a slowly going back into maybe not our old ways, but no longer seeking the Lord. So if we're salt that um, no longer has any flavor. We come around people, and, they're, and they'll, they'll be the ones that are saying, wow. I remember when this guy was on fire. I remember when he was really uh, sharing the gospel with people. Or at work, you know, you're now you're joining in with uh, with the guys that are kind of gossiping and telling jokes and stuff. And and they're 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 even wondering, you know, why? That's weird. This guy's uh, so that now you just created a witness that you were before into a bad witness. And now you're just around people and you're just you're driving them from uh, uh, from the Lord. Or, or even if they don't know the Lord, you're, you're not giving them any desire to seek the Lord. Because you're that Christian that you know goes out and hangs out with them and has a beer or two, so it's that's a dangerous place to be. And uh, those are uh, pretty harsh words for such a cool scripture at the beginning, right? It's like wow, we're the salt, and now it's like ooh, we're gonna trample you under foot by man. So uh, you know, it, the truth is that it's a privilege to be the salt. It's a privilege. To do what we're doing, to have this knowledge, and to be able to to give it out, and um, by no means I take coming up here uh, lightly at all. I've been uh, my hands are like ice cubes right now, and, and uh, because I, you know what, I want to let you guys know what the Lord is saying, not what I'm saying. I want to be accurate in what I tell you, and that's how we all need to be. Because just because we're not up here at work, at home, we need to steer our families right. We cannot give them what our interpretation of the scriptures. We have to give them the accurate. Uh, translation, we have to give them exactly what the scriptures are saying, and that's how our counseling is. So it comes with a huge responsibility to be uh, to say that uh, that Jesus tells us that we're the salt. You know, so we need to, we need to stay salty. You know, uh, and the only way to do that is to stay in prayer, uh, seek God's will in our lives, stay in God's word day and night, 
and uh, do exactly what we're doing tonight. Like I said earlier, you know, come in fellowship. Acts two forty two. Fellowship. Seek the Lord. Worship Him. You know, and uh, and not just one night a week. You know, as much as we possibly can. You know, some of us been there's guys in here probably here seven days a week fellowshipping and hanging out. You know, and and uh, but true fellowship. Not talking about the baseball game. Talking about Jesus Christ and talking about the Word. That's what fellowship is. The other stuff is just kind of visiting with your friends. So true fellowship. And that's how we stay salty Christians. Now, if we move over to um, to verse 14, yeah, we, we're going to change gears here. And, and uh, Jesus is saying, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. So light. So again, you know, you start thinking, wow, I'm the light of the world. That is so cool. You know, God, I'm, I'm a born-again Christian. People see me with this glow. No, nah, not really. Um, yeah, we're born again Christians, and we have the light of God in us. We have the light of Christ. It ain't nothing that we've done. But the only way we have that light is because we're walking in the Spirit. We're walking. The Holy Spirit's leading us. Just because we say a prayer and we say uh, we go to church, uh, don't be surprised if people don't see that light in us. So we have to be doers of the Word so that um, that light shines and and it will, and it does, because I know you guys are in here. You guys are here every Thursday night. You're faithful and preaching to the choir here. So at work, you're the guys that people go, man, this guy, no matter what happens, this guy you know, gets yelled at, still in a good mood, doesn't care. It's like, yeah, you care. Of course you care, but you know that there's something greater than that, and that's Jesus Christ. So um, something that light does, it exposes darkness, right? And, um, and as Christians, we're on the spotlight. Yeah, we like to say that we're the light, but... Since the light starts with us and it's going out to draw others, uh, guess what? Our darkness is going to come out to people because uh, we can't fake that. You can't, uh, we're, we're, uh, when, when we're the light uh, of the world, as uh, Jesus is saying, our faults come out. And uh, sometimes it's not bad. When our faults come out, it's okay to be, to be the light and to have a fault and to, uh, and to have somebody uh, say, say to me, hey, man, you know, you, you did this or you did that. And you, you take it humbly and you accept that. That's how you continue to be the light. And there's no pride involved. Um, and and uh, since we are the, on the spotlight because we're the Christian, uh, where we're at, uh, people are watching us. And, and not always watching for the bad thing. You know, sometimes they just want to see how a Christian is going to handle a controversy, how they're going to handle a disagreement, you know. Um, they're going to, like... Uh, use the Bible to uh, like kind of like biblically curse at somebody you don't want to do that you want to you want to you want to be the light you want to be the one that in that disagreement you're gonna you're gonna come to an agreement but you're gonna come to it because Jesus and the Holy Spirit is uh, working in and through through us not uh, not because we got into the flesh and you know what it's not easy it's not an easy thing to do I mean uh, that's another point uh, that my wife <laughs> Brought, brought, up, brought up to me. So, you know, um, you know, we, we, we're human beings, but and we, and Jesus knows we're gonna we're gonna slip up and we're gonna we're gonna sin. But what makes us different is that conviction of the sin, the repentance of that sin, and uh, coming back to the Lord and saying, Lord, you know, I, I need you to help me with this because I keep falling into this thing. And and He sees our heart when there's true pain and and there's true conviction in our heart. The Lord sees it, and there's forgiveness there, guys, and that light doesn't go away. So, um, you know, and, and being that light, again, we go back to that person at work or our family that's going through that struggle. Um, they're going to come to us because they see that, man, you know, you might have issues at home as far as somebody's ill in your house, and, uh, and you're, you're still going to work, and you're still, you got a, a, good, a good attitude about it. And uh, all you telling them is, you know, hey, pray for my wife or pray for my kids. And um, they don't understand that. But when it comes, when it's their turn and they're, in, in they're suffering and they're in that hardship, they're going to come to one of us. And they're going to want that comfort. They're going to want to know where we got it from. And we're going to steer them straight into this, into this book. And we're going to steer them straight to Jesus Christ. And we're going to be the ones that disciple and minister to these people. And uh, Lord willing, those are gonna come, they're going to come to him. And, uh, and have salvation, eternal life. You know. So, like I said, light exposes darkness in us, but also 
you've probably noticed, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure 100% of everybody in this room has noticed that, as a Christian man who loves the Lord, and if you have a family that loves the Lord and is walking with you, you go to a family gathering, and uh, a lot of darkness gets exposed. Not, you don't have to say a word. We don't have to say anything. We just walk into the room, and people uh, they either stop talking, or they'll notice that, oh, you know, he's here, and you know, they, they don't drink. So they try not to drink around you. You know, and they try not to say a bad word around you, which is cool. Hey, I don't want people saying bad words around me or drinking around me, but um, it's, we don't want to be, we don't want to go into a place like that in our family and condemn them. Again, we don't want to beat them up, but there should be a conviction, and there should be that light that comes out where, where they, um, it, it kind of stings a little bit to them, but they also want to know, and they also want to have it, but they don't want to give something up in their life. There's something they don't want to give up, so they don't get too close to us, but we can't stop being that light. We can't go into a place, uh, whether it's a work gathering or a, or a family gathering, and uh, say, you know, I kind of want to fit in with these guys, and uh, so, you know, I'll have a beer, or, you know, I'll sit in with the jokes, or I'll watch this movie with, I'll go to the movie with them and watch this movie, you know, this one time, just, you know, so they, so they don't think I'm weird. Well, guess what, man? They, they need to think that we're weird, if that's what it is, because we have a standard to live by. We have uh, no compromises to live by in our lives. And when we start compromising, that salt starts losing its flavor. That light starts to get uh, dimmer. And it becomes, now it's vague. Now it's like, wow, I don't understand his, uh, this guy's Christianity. It's kind of, he says he loves Jesus Christ, but yet, you know, he does all this other stuff. Um, and I'm not saying, um, you know, we're like pious. But there are things that, that, that are biblically wrong, and we know it. And that's what we have to stand by the word of God, not by the world. We can't gauge our, uh, what we do by uh, the world standards. It's uncomfortable. It's a lot of times uncomfortable. I was uh, sharing with Dennis earlier that on Saturday I went to uh, my brother's birthday party, and it was totally uncomfortable. And I love my brother. I mean, we, we're like, uh, we're like brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, but people are drinking in there. I have a, a you know, I have a niece that's, you know, confused. And, and uh, there's just, um, just a, a lot of wrong going on. And uh, when, we, when we come in, our family's a little bit of an outcast. Nobody really sits with us. Um, I sit with my mom and dad, you know, and, and uh, not, that no, not that they don't like us, but they really don't want to hear what we have to say only because I'm not going to condemn them. I'm not even going to say, probably, I won't say anything about their, what they're doing, but they know where we stand. They know that there's no compromise in our lives. They see what my daughter, um, where she's headed in the Lord, and uh, they, don't, they don't want that. They don't want to be too close to that because, again, like the salt, salt heals and it. And it makes you thirsty, on, but it also burns a little bit. And sometimes we need to burn a little bit. Uh, you know, the people around us need to feel that, that sting so that they can come to the Lord later. Those are, those are um, a lot of times, that's what we were. We, we got stung a few times, and then we realized when somebody came by, and we, they spoke to us in, in, a, in a gracious and loving way, and we listened, and we came to church with them. And we are like, well, wow, this is what, I've been missing this all, all my life. So... Um, we need to, that, that's why we need to let his light shine through us. It's got to shine through us, even if we are uncomfortable. We can't, we can't blend in, because when we start doing that, the light gets dim, and the salt gets, uh, gets weak, and uh, it confuses people. It even confuses the Christians that, uh, that are strong Christians. They go, wow, you know, I thought that you were walking with the Lord, man, and now you're compromised. And it can make another, another brother stumble who's not uh, walking strong. You know, he's thinking, oh, wow, you know, he's, he can do that. So I'd be all right if I did that. That's not a big deal. Then you got a guy that's probably going to go into a spiral because of something that we did. Because we our life got dim. Because our, our salt lost its flavor. So his love needs to flow. His peace needs to minister to us. And that's how, that's how it should be with, um, when, when we're around others. A loving, a loving type of light and, and salt. And, uh, you know, in, uh, in the scripture says, um, in uh, verse 15, it says, Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. 
So in other words, you wouldn't go to your house, it's all dark, turn on your lamp and throw a blanket over it. And in, in a sense, that's what we do when, when, when we dim our light. The light of Jesus Christ is in us. And when we go somewhere and we try to blend in, we have this light that's radiating through us. We have this, this we're the hands and feet of, of, of the Lord. And yet we're like, oh, you know what, I'm gonna, I don't want to be too bright here because these guys are, you know, I'm the only one and I don't want anybody to, to like outcast me. And you know what, sometimes we have to be outcast a little bit. Ephesians 5.8. Um, it says, uh, Ephesians 5, 8, it says, uh, For you were once darkness, but now you're a light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to walk as children of the light. we got to be the same person here at Calvary that we are at home with our wives and our, ki and our kids, that we are at work, that we are, you know, riding our, our bike, for exercise, whatever, at the gym. Uh, there should be no change. Pastor Phil talked about consistency, and that's what it should be. We need to be consistent in our walk, because uh, if we're not consistent in our walk, uh, again, that light gets dim, that salt gets weak, and we confuse people as to what <coughs> true salvation is and what walking with the Lord is. And that's a dangerous place to be, because now we're being responsible now, knowing the Word of God, walking with the Lord, now we become responsible for other people's walk, for other people's, uh, the path that they've taken because um, we're, we're, our walk is weak now. And now we're driving them in the wrong direction. And it's not that everybody's going to walk away from the Lord, right? But there's plenty of people. You know, I'm sure in here, each one of us can, can, can't count in one hand or maybe in, you have more than 50 to 100 people that you know that you come across. Uh, throughout your life that you actually physically know that uh, they're in all different stages from not knowing the Lord to strong Christians to weak Christians that are just barely hanging in there and um, they're looking at your walk they're looking at my walk so um, if, if we go back to that darkness that we were in before the weak ones the ones that don't know the Lord they're going to follow they're going to be there because hey, hey you know, he can do it he's a Christian he can do that so we don't we don't want we don't want to get weak in our walk. And again, I can't stress enough. It has to be uh, the word of God in our lives all day, every day. Uh, let that light that Jesus has in us let it let it brighten that entire place wherever we're at. You know, in here right now, somebody walking here that doesn't know the Lord, they're going to see light. Not these lights. They're going to see everybody in here. They're going to see joy. They're going to see guys that are in here that are listening to the word, that are intent, and that want to that wanna live a life of, uh, that Christ wants them to live. And, but when we get out, when we get out of here, we're going to all separate to little light bulbs and to little, pieces, little grains of salt all throughout, um, throughout Downey, Bellflower, you know, all these, all these surrounding areas. Just like the salt, when you, when you season your steak, you don't pour it all in one spot, right? <laughs> little, little grain all over, right? So it'll taste good. And just like light, you turn that one light bulb in darkness, and it gets, you know, one candle in a, in a dark room will light up the entire room. And that's how we should be. That's how we should be. We should be, even when it's light out, we should be overpowering that light. And, uh, and, and yeah, it's, it's super dark. And uh, there's a lot of lost, a lost people that are in that darkness. It's not just that they're lost that they don't know the Lord. There's a lot of people that are deep in darkness. And a lot of us in here can relate to that. And if, again, if there wasn't a person in each one of our lives that shined that light in love and in compassion to us, we wouldn't be in here today. And uh, we need to be that. We need to be that loving, uh, that loving light. And, uh, and again, I, I wrote this in my notes a couple of times, which is um, because I wanted to remember myself is uh, don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. And a lot of times, you know, I, I'm talking from experience here. You know, you come and talk to somebody and, and the Lord is telling you to share something with them. And you know exactly what he wants you to share, but you're like, ah, I don't think so. Not today. And... Uh, you know, it doesn't happen every time, but it does happen to us. And that, that, that could be chalked up to being ashamed of Christ for that moment. You know, hey, 
Peter went through it. Um, he repented of it and came back and looked at the amazing, amazing apostle of Christ, right? Um, and uh, we're nowhere near, uh, nowhere near that, right? So we can, we can fall. It can happen, but we need to be aware of it, and let it, and it should happen less and less. We should, our light should get brighter and brighter. It'll never get as bright as it's going to be when we're with the Lord. But it should, we should always be striving to always, for that light to always be brighter. So, you know, um, uh, when we're the light to somebody who's hurting, somebody who's deep in darkness um, in the world, believe it or not, no matter how hard that person seems to be or no matter hard, how, how defiant they are, when they're in that area, in that point of their life where they're just hurting so bad, that light brings a lot of warmth and it brings a lot of comfort, especially because we don't go to them condemning them about why they're in the position that they're in. We go, we go to them in compassion and in love. And um, so that's something we, you know, if, if you're married in here and you have kids, um, sometimes we forget to do that in our own homes. We're so compassionate to those outside of our home. We're so loving to, um, to, to friends at work or people at church. But then when it comes to our wives and our kids, all our wives and our kids, you know, I know her attitude, I know his attitude, I, you, know, I'm, you know. So we don't take the time to, to really be loving and compassionate. And that's where our ministry starts. We need to be that at home. We need to be that, just like, just like we are outside because we're around other people that don't know us, we need to be that person at home. Our wives need prayer. Just like we do. They're praying for us. Our wives need prayer throughout, throughout their day. Our kids need prayer. They, when, when, when my daughter comes to me, and uh, there's, you know, uh, a few people find out that I don't like to see my daughter cry and they talk bad to her. <laughs> and uh, I, uh, when she comes to me, I'm like a little kid. I, I'm just, I just come around like, I'm, I'm like, what's wrong? You know, and I want to pray with her. I want to seek the Lord. I want her to, I want to give her biblical counseling. And a lot of times we forget to do that. Because it's our home. And when my wife has had a hard day, we, you know, we, we chalk it up to, oh, you know, it was a tough day at work. Oh, all right. Well, we'll have dinner and, you know, watch some TV. You can relax. No. No, we need to pray with them. We need to comfort them. And sometimes, uh, I would say most of the time, we just need to listen to them. They don't really want any input at that time. They just want to kind of <laughs> tell us about their day. And they don't want us to fix anything or tell them anything else. Just, you know, pray with them. Pray with them and let them know that, that it's not just it's not just me that the Lord is the one that's comforting them, and that I understand, you know, and that we'll, I'll be there, you know. So that's um that's that light. Now our last verse, verse sixteen, it says, uh, let's see, so Matthew five sixteen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That one sound, almost seems a little controversial, huh? That, uh, uh, there's scriptures that say, don't let your right hand see what your left hand is doing. And this one says, hey, let your light shine before men and uh, let them see the good works that, uh, that you're doing. But the key part of this verse is good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Yes, our light needs to shine before men. And uh, they, they, they need to see that light. But not to not for in any means to glorify us or anything that we do. All that we do, we do because of Christ. And all that, uh, all the glory and all the praise needs to be deflected from us to the Lord. Honestly. Not just, oh, you know, bro, that was the Lord that did that, man. No, not like that. It's like, you know what? Um, hey, I appreciate that, that, you, that you appreciated what I did here, but I couldn't have done that if it wasn't for the Lord uh, guiding me. If it wasn't for the Lord putting it in my heart, because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have helped you move, bro. I just wouldn't. That's just my nature. But, but on the other hand, you know, I come to know the Lord, and you know what? He suffered for me. He suffered on the cross so that I can have eternal life with him. And I accepted that gift. And by accepting that gift, I accepted the responsibility of being that light. And, and that's how we share the gospel. And a lot of times we don't do that. You say, uh, somebody, you know, somebody who doesn't know the Lord, somebody who works, oh, thanks, bro, for doing that. You say, oh, man, you're welcome, man. It's all God. And uh, that's, an, that's a witness opportunity right there. 
like, oh man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you why I did that. Or let me tell you why, you know, why the Lord loves you, man. And, and why some people do these things, you know. And uh, always deflect it. We're, we're no, uh, we're, we're no good. We are, we are evil, evil to the core. But what's good in us is Jesus Christ. And, um, amen, praise God that he, that he has allowed us and opened our eyes to the word. And brought us to a place to where we can, we're not blind anymore. And we can see. And again, with that, with that, uh, that sight that we have now, comes responsibility and comes accountability. And uh, that's how we do when we're in fellowship. We're accountable to each other. Our groups, our groups should be accountable to one another. You know, you know, you should be like brothers. A lot of us have been in our groups for the last uh, couple of years together. You, we should know each other really well. We should be able to call one another and um, say, man, you know what? I'm going through this right now. I need you to pray with me. Or, hey, you know what? Um, can we meet someday this week? Because I, I need to talk to you. And that's, that's how we should be. Not just the group leader. The group, some, sometimes you don't, you, know, you don't connect as much with the group. You can be connected with another guy in your group. And that guy is like, uh, and you two guys can, can connect and you can pray for each other and, and be that light and be that salt and uh, be honest. So when, when somebody comes, when one of your brothers comes to you and says, you know, this is what's going on, be, be that little bit of salt that kind of rubs in there and says, you know what, that's not, that's not right, bro. You got you to gotta straighten your life. And I'm going to be the one that's going to help you. I'm going to walk with you in that. So that's, um, that was our verses for today, man. I, uh, I, I, I pray that the Lord spoke to you guys' hearts and... Um, and to praise God, man. And I don't want to be the one that says, uh, oh, yeah, it was all God. But it was all God, man. It was all the Lord. Because this is the first time I've ever done this. And uh, if it wasn't for the Lord, I would have read these notes verbatim. You guys would have fell asleep on me. So praise God. And uh, let's go ahead and close in prayer. And afterwards, we'll, uh, Jeremy will come up and we'll uh, uh, get our groups and pray for a little bit. Oh, Lord. Again, Father, we are just so grateful for your love, for your mercy, Lord, and for your grace. Lord, I pray that as we leave tonight, uh, after the study is over, and as we all go out uh, to, our, to our different area, Lord, to our jobs and our homes, Lord, that we are your light, that you shine through us, Lord, that we don't ever quench your light, that we are the salt of, the, of this earth, Lord, that we can uh, be used by you, that we are your hands and feet, Father God, that, um, that all that we do, we only can do because you do it through us. Father God, help us to uh, just um, be a reflection of you. That when others see us, Lord, that they see your face. That they don't see who we are and that they don't even remember who we are. They remember that somebody did uh, something for them, but that they remember that they were ministered to. And that they were uh, given your name, the name of Jesus Christ, uh, to remember them by. And Father, I just pray for your hand to go before the rest of this evening, before the discussions today in our groups, Lord. And Father, we just love you so much and thank you for all that you do every day for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you.